Hey there, I've done a lot of videos on capoing and today I'm doing a video on capoing at the third fret specifically. So I'm going to show you some chords. We're going to be using familiar shapes, but I'm going to tell you what the chords actually are because I find that that's very important to know. A couple reasons. One, when you're going through a, a song that's in a bad key like F or B flat and you write the shapes that you're going to use over that, you have that means you have to transpose the whole song. If you just know them, where the shapes are found on a capo position, you don't need to do that. Um, and then the other problem with thinking that you're like, if you're playing an F and you capo third fret, but you think you're playing in D because you're using D shapes, you go up to do a D lick or something like that, it won't work. Okay, so that's another reason to know what you're what you're actually playing here. Okay, so I'm going to do a diagram on the left, uh, on your right, my left. Um, and it's going to have the capo in it and the frets below so you can actually see the shape that looks familiar but where it's located what it actually is so what you're essentially going to be doing is learning the chords in the third position so it's called position playing where you play in different positions on the neck um, and when you nor normally when you play without a capo and you're down in the very first fret that's called first position or I call it sometimes open position because you have open strings so what the capo does is it just kind of brings your nut forward so that now this is your new open position, but you're technically in third position, okay? So let's go over some chords. Okay, so this looks like a D shape, but it's actually an F chord. So this would be the one chord in the key of F. The two chord in the key of F would be G minor. This looks like an E minor chord, but it's actually G minor. You can play it with the first and second finger, or you can play it with the second and third finger. It really doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to skip the third chord. We're going to go to the four chord, which is a B flat in the key of F. But this looks like a G shape. And then the five chord in the key of F is C, which is our A shape. And then let's do the sixth chord, which is actually going to be a bar chord. It looks like kind of a B minor chord, but actually if you were to take out the capo, you would just see it as a D minor chord, but that's the sixth chord in the key of um, D minor. I'm sorry, in the key of F. Now, we could do a cheater one. I sometimes will do this. If I want open, open strings on my sixth chord, take these two fingers up two strings and play from the, the uh, second open, second, third open. And I would call that a D minor 7-11. Sounds complex, but it's really a simpler chord than the pure D minor. Okay, so what I want you to do is to try to memorize these six or these five chords: F, G minor, B flat, C, and D minor. Okay, so where's B flat? Right here. Where's G minor? Where's D minor? Where's Waldo? Just kidding. Where's C? Almost said A. Where's F? Okay. Now in the key of G, we'll have, or, I'm sorry, in the key of B flat, we'll have some common chords, of course. Uh, the one chord in the key of B flat is B flat, which looks like a G shape. The two chord is C minor which looks like an A minor shape. The four chord looks like a C, but it's E flat. This is E flat. I mean, try doing that with any other E flat without a capo. That's the beauty of a capo. You can make any key sound good. And then the five chord in the key of B flat is F, which you had before. And the sixth chord in the key of B flat is G minor, which we also had before. So the one, two, four, five, and six. Okay, play C minor. Play E flat. Play B flat. Play G minor. F. So that my, my hope is that you will memorize the chords at this position. 
those are the main those are the main chords. We have some other chords we could do. Um, G would be an E shape. So that's G major. So that should be a fairly familiar chord. If we did an F chord, that would be A flat. An F shape, sorry. If, if we did an F shape, it would be e, uh, A flat. And uh, the nice thing about doing bar chords in front of a capo is that the strings are a little bit lower. Um, the strings are at fret level here instead of at the nut level. So it's a little bit easier to push them down. Might be a great way to kind of practice your bar chords. Okay. One of the important things for you to realize is that the prefix, the letter name of the chord may change, but the suffix, the second part of the chord, which describes the type of chord it is, whether it's minor seventh, major seventh, or you know suspended or whatever, that doesn't change. So all that information that you have down here in the first and open position will transfer right up to here. So where this was an F chord, this is F sus, F, F2, F. This is F major seven, this is F7, this is F6, this is F minor. All of that transfers up. So all you have to do is change the front part of the chord, the, the prefix from D to F in this case. Same thing would be true for the B flat chord, anything you do. It's true for all the chords. Okay, so I hope this helps you get a little more familiar with your fretboard because as a growing guitarist, that's what you want to do. Ultimately, you want to know your entire fretboard. And as we kind of work up the frets, um, capoing in different keys, you're going to learn different positions and you're going to start to learn all the chords in those positions. And my hope is that you'll start to see them even with the capo off. Because this is also an F chord. And this is as difficult as it, as it is, this is still a B flat chord. But it can... It can lead to being able to play in different positions. Okay? I hope this has been helpful. God bless you guys. I, I will talk to you soon. I probably will be doing more videos on this subject soon, as well as other videos. Thanks for watching.